Hello everyone and welcome to another vacuum cleaner demonstration and review from iBasiac, YouTube's premier channel for everything vacuum related. Well, what do I have bouncing on my knee today? Well, it's not a bouncing baby, it's a little baby vacuum cleaner. Yes, this is a Goblin Stick Vac. At the time of making this video, you can buy this from Asda stores nationwide. It was online, but it doesn't seem to be available online at the moment, but you never know. Try Asda.com just to see. This was on rollback when I bought it, and it was, I think, £25, reduced from about 35 So I thought for 25 Nicker, let's give it a go. Let's see if this little goblin stick back is as good as, say, a Dyson DC-59. Let's do a direct comparison, shall we? Oh, yeah, oh, sorry, I don't have that one. No, no, uh, yeah, uh, sorry about that, no. <clears throat> I was going to do a link to a direct comparison between this £25 vacuum and the Dyson DC-59 costing 300 and something. How much do they cost now? I'm not sure. Which would have been the winner had I been able to do that test? Well, without having a Dyson DC-59, not yet anyway, I think the Dyson would have won. But then again, it does cost a lot more than this little machine. But if your purse or your wallet won't stretch to a Dyson at the moment, perhaps this little goblin is what you need for those quick clean-up jobs around the house. Who knows? Anyway, I'm finally uploading this video. You'll be pleased. One of my viewers said, when are you going to do the goblin? Goblin, not goblin. Gobbling, that was it. Gobbling video. Well, I thought, I'm not doing a gobbling video, not on this channel anyway. I will do a goblin review for you, but not a gobbling one. If you know what I mean. But anyway, we'll see if this goblin gobbles up the dirt. Good link there um, very shortly. Anyway, here it is. It's very light. I can hold it in one hand. I am very strong and muscular, as you can see. So, you know, it's no effort for me to hold this machine aloft. We'll try it with my pinky finger. And yes, look, even with my pinky finger, I can easily handle this vacuum. So yes, it does bear a, a, a striking resemblance to a Dyson, sort of. They have taken a few design elements, I think, from Dyson's popular handhelds. A lot of people copy them, don't they? But uh, here it is. So it's the bagless unit. Cyclonic, but not multi-cyclonic, despite these design elements on the top that might hint at being a multi-cyclonic vacuum. It's just a single cyclone and quite an inefficient one, I expect. We'll see, we'll see how it performs on a lot of dirt. Now, so here it is. Now, you get this unit. It's obviously mains, unlike the Dyson, which is rechargeable, does have um, a mains power lead. This is one of the nozzles you get with the machine. It's a crevice nozzle, but it has this detachable brush. But you can use the crevice nozzle just like that. So there we have it. But you also get, apart from these, so you can use it like that in handheld mode. Apart from that, you get this, your main carpet and hard floor nozzle and two plastic extension tubes. There you go, that's the underside with three litter pickers, which will hopefully pick up pet hair. And there's a couple of little wheels at the front there. You can see those two wheels, two wheels at the back. So you can use it like a stick vacuum. And there you go, you can just put the floor nozzle onto there and whip round and do your carpets and your hard floors. Everything clicks in a little again a little bit Dyson-esque there's a little switch here a little catch that you have to press to release the tools. To empty the bin I've got a little latch here and all we have to do is go like that. Oops needs a bit of help and the bottom of the bin falls down. Not very easily, but you know, I do have to help it along. And you have a little button here that says push, push that, 
you can release the whole bin, so there we are, you've got the motor unit on its own. So we've got the whole bin released here for cleaning. To access the filter, we've got a little catch here. Take off the very plasticky feeling top. And inside here, we have your shroud. There's the dust container. And inside the shroud, we've got one of those pleated filters. If I can, mm. you have to turn it one way. It's a bit stiff. Hang on a minute. Ah, oh, it does say unlock and it says unlock and lock. Oh dear, it is a bit. Oh, I thought I'd clean this. <laughs> well, that shows you how effective the cyclone is. Not very. Basically, all the dirt is attracted to the, the filter as you can see so it uh, doesn't bode well for the demonstration I'm about to do so before I do the demo I'll just use that SIBO behind me and clean that filter up so it uh, will be as good as new. Well you find me in my kitchen and I've put down a bit of dirt one half of the screen is carpet and the other half is hard floor so, as you can see, this side here is an entrance mat, so it's a very short pile carpet, should be fairly easy to clean. And the other side is just the regular hard floor, the vinyl flooring that I have in my kitchen. Now, I've spread about here the sort of things you might spill in your average kitchen. So we've got some rolled oats, flour, sugar and couscous and a bit of rice so various different sized particles i'm just going to take the little goblin which i've set up for floor cleaning with this dual purpose carpet and hard floor head so there's nothing to change this is designed to clean both hard floors and carpets there's no pedal so there's no brush underneath so you should be able to go straight from carpet onto hard floor. So I'm going to start from this side on the entrance mat and go all the way through forward once and then I'll pull back the nozzle and we'll just see how effective this little goblin is at picking up this dirt. Might be a bit noisy as a lot of vacuums are so here we go switch on and see how it does. Pretty noisy, I think you'll find, yes, but now it's not done a bad job at all. This nozzle, um, unfortunately like many nozzles on my kitchen floor, if they're too powerful, the floor tends to stick to the underside of the nozzle and um, it does tend to snow plow and this machine actually has snow plowed. If I turn the camera, I can do it, there you go. So you can see here at the top of the screen, because the nozzle was flat against the floor, it has snow ploughed that bit of dirt. But just by tilting the nozzle, let's just move the camera again slightly for you, so we can see it a bit better. There we go. So if we tilt the nozzle back, we should be able to deal with those rolled oats that it's just pushed along. So all in all, I think it's the floor, so I'm not going to blame the vacuum. This floor does tend to defeat a lot of cleaners, not just cheap ones like this, but expensive ones. Some do cope with it. It's because the suction, for this little handheld device, it's pretty powerful. It's a 600 watt motor. And as you can see, there's the dirt that I've just picked up inside here, but I do suspect that a lot of that dirt will be clinging onto the filter. If we turn it on now, we could see if it's got any sort of cyclonic action. There is a bit of a cyclonic action. 
but also because of the exhaust vent it was blowing some of that muck that I haven't picked up yet but all in all you know it's, it's not done too bad has it it's done better than I expected it to for 20 pounds or what was it 25 pounds I can't remember but anyway it was cheap all in all that's not bad yes it's snow ploughed but so many vacuum cleaners do snow plough the dirt but just tilt the nozzle and it'll pick up fine but obviously normally you won't have so much mess and it will actually clear this all up I'm sure if I was to continue the cleaning which I will do I think it'll pick up everything albeit quite noisily so I'll just click the motor unit back onto the tube and I'll clean up the rest of this mess well I've come into my living room now and in front of me I've put down some dirt onto the carpet just to see how this little goblin stick vac copes with dirt on a regular short pile carpet. Now I've not put down quite as much dirt as I'd put down for say a full size upright or cylinder demonstration because this machine just won't cope and it's not designed for doing your big cleaning jobs. It's designed for doing your quick clean up jobs in between your main vacuuming. So if you've got a little spillage in your kitchen or on your living room carpet you can whip out this machine and pick it up. It's also because of its size, it'll be good on your stairs and of course inside your car where a big bulky vacuum is just too much effort to try and get near your car. You can carry this out, you'll need an extension lead, but carry this out to your car and you can do your car interior with it too. So, without any further ado, I'm going to go back and forth through the mess and see how it copes. But before I do, I'll just stand up and just give you a rough idea of the machine. Now it's it's quite a short tube, but you know, it's not too bad because of course if you are taller, you can angle the machine up quite a lot. I mean it will go almost vertical, so you can be using it like that. So if you're very tall, it's fine, but if you're a bit shorter, you can use it at whatever angle that suits you. So it's quite easy to use, easy to push when it's off of course because of the two wheels at the back of the nozzle and the two wheels at the front although as you saw earlier in the demonstration it was too powerful for the floor and the entrance mat but I think it'll be okay on this carpet. Right then let's angle the camera into the mess in front of me and we'll just pass the nozzle back and forth and we'll just see how well this little machine does. Well as you can see there's quite a lot of dirt in front of me, quite a lot of dust, that's basically used SIBO Duo P carpet cleaning powder, a lot of that. So any fine powder like that will probably clog up the filter of this machine fairly quickly. There's also another, a mixture of hairs, carpet fluff, other little bits and pieces. Okay, let's switch the goblin on, pass the nozzle forwards and back and evaluate the cleaning results. Now, as you can see, it hasn't done bad at all. This, of course, is just surface dirt that I've put down. Whether it's going to clean deep down, I don't know. But like I said, it's not for that. It's for your quick in-between jobs. And for a lot of people, as long as the carpet looks clean, they're not really concerned with any dirt that's deep, deep down in the pile. But like I said, this is basically a supplementary vacuum to your main cleaner. Unless you live in a very small house, it might do as your own machine, your only machine. But personally, I think it's really just for your in-between jobs. You'll still need a full-size mains vacuum. Now, apart from it has left a few of the bits of fluff as I expected it would do here, the dust has been removed. But, wow, it's pretty full though. Let me just take the handle off and show you. That is quite a full vacuum. Let's see how the suction is. Now that's not, it's still, I think it has lost some suction, but there's still plenty of suction there, quite surprisingly. It's not, if I just shake it, 
It's not up to the maximum fill line yet. There's the maximum fill line. So I've still got maybe half an inch, maybe a couple of centimetres that I can still fill before I should empty this. So I think the other bits of mess should be able to be cleaned up. So that's what I'm going to do now. Click the tube back on and clean up the rest of this. see from the last shot that it was struggling to pick up anything else and I'm not surprised the container is absolutely full to the max so it has lost quite a bit of suction power so it's not going to really touch these pet tears that are stuck to the carpet but then again I didn't expect it to but I have given it a lot of dirt to remove and if we look at the bin we can see that that is pretty full. In fact, I'll just tap it a bit more. It's more or less up to the maximum fill line. So that would simulate quite a few weeks worth of use. If you were just using it as a quick pickup cleaner, if it wasn't for your main cleaning, it's not going to get that much dirt in one go. But obviously for the purpose of the demonstration, I wanted to show you how much it could pick up. Right, let's see just how much it's picked up by emptying the bin. Obviously, at home you would be doing this over a bin, preferably outside, but you're going to have to help it. No, don't switch on. <laughs> so, that is quite a pile of dirt that we have actually picked up off the carpet. It also includes the muck that I cleaned up off the kitchen floor earlier in the demo. But there is still some suction. But, you know, now the bin's emptied, there's still quite a bit of suction there. So, we can clean this up again. I'll just attach the crevice tool and we'll just see if it's gonna clean up this big pile of mess. Yes, it has. It's picked that up again. I'm quite impressed with that, to be honest. I didn't think it would do quite so well. But now I'm going to open up the filter and we'll just see how clogged that pleated filter is. Okay, so I'm just going to remove the dirt bin from the machine by pushing the button on the top. Put the motor unit to one side and I'll take off the crevice tool. In fact, I need to empty the dirt first, so again, I'll just have to drop it onto the floor. Don't worry, I'll soon be cleaning that up again. Not necessarily with this machine. Right, so I've emptied the dirt bin. Obviously that's something you should do really after every use, unless you've only got a few bits in there. So we need to have a look now to see how that little pleated filter has coped. So we'll just take the top off and turn it to the unlock position, oh, which is remove the whole thing but anyway you need that that's going to have a bit of a rinse in some warm soapy water and then I'll thoroughly dry that before putting it back in the machine now obviously that's going to need a good clean up as is the shroud and the thing is because this is not multi-cyclonic of course it will easily wash in warm so soapy water leave it to dry and it'll be as good as new but let's now we've got the shroud off Turn it to the unlocked position. And it is a bit stiff, this. There we go. And I think there's going to be quite a lot of mess. I'm right. Get ready for the shot. Eee! Look at that. And look in there. So as you can see, it's quite an inefficient cyclone. It was still had some suction enough to do mostly what you'd need it to do for the quick cleanups but obviously that is going to need a thorough clean before I use it again 
But here, obviously these, the filter is the lungs of your vacuum. So like if you smoke, your lungs become clogged up with tar and they're not working efficiently. Same with a vacuum, although you don't, a vacuum doesn't smoke, but it picks up dirt. And when you have an inefficient cyclone system, this is what happens. You have all this muck stuck to this pleated filter. Even this shroud really didn't help very much in this case. Possibly if this pleated filter was also covered in a, a mesh filter that went over the top, that might stop some of the larger dirt from sticking, but it would not have stopped this fine dust. Look at that. But this, this would happen after you'd used the machine for a long period. Obviously, I've given it an extreme example to, to pick up, just to demo it. So that will need cleaning. I'm going to clean that with another vacuum cleaner. I don't think I'll bother washing that because it will come clean using, say, a crevice tool of another machine. But everything else, I'll be washing all that out. So it's a, it's a mucky business. So before I carry on with the demo, and just show you how it cleans stairs and some other things you can do with it. I'm just going to give this a bit of a wash. Right, so that's all the parts nicely cleaned up after that epic demonstration. I've washed the shroud in some warm soapy water, rinsed it and thoroughly dried it. I've also given the bin a bit of a, a rinse out and also dried that thoroughly. And as far as the filter goes, you can actually clean this under running water. But because I want to use this machine again quite quickly, I've just cleaned most of the dirt off using another vacuum cleaner. You can still, it's not 100% white again. There is still some dirt in there, but I've removed enough of the dirt so it's not going to affect the performance to um, a massive degree. So all I need to do now is reassemble these parts. So first thing to do is put the pleated filter back into the shroud. Just need to line up the lugs with the holes. Just turn it until it goes down. There we go. It's pushed down. Now I need to lock it. It's a little bit stiff, but that's locked into position now. Then that needs to go back in the bin. So again, I need to line up the lugs just a case of turning it till it gets to the right position which is there then again I need to twist until it just clicks into position and then I just need to put the top of the unit back on it's got a little slot just at the front there you can just see that little slot that corresponds it's hard to pick up on camera because it's see-through but there's a little lug that sticks out so you need to locate the lug into the little slot at the top then, once that's in, just push down until that latch clicks into place. So that's the bin fully assembled, ready to go back on the motor. And we just need to line it up at the base. There's a little lip here, as you can see, whoops, there. And it's a lip under here. So we need to marry those two together and push until it locks in place. So you'll know if it's in place correctly because the top of the bag, bagless container will be flush with the button that says push. So now we should be back to full suction. <laughs> yes, indeedy we are. Right then, now for stair cleaning, it's a bit unfortunate that we don't get a nozzle that I would say is suitable for stair cleaning. We get, of course, the regular carpet and floor nozzle. I just lean forward. We get the crevice nozzle, that's ideal for your car, it's ideal for down the sides of your chairs, around your skirting boards, that sort of thing. And if I reach over again, we get the quite good actually dusting brush, quite soft and it's a nice shape for doing around the tops of your skirting boards. So if you want to reach up high, if you've got cobwebs in the corner, you can do that because of course you can connect the crevice tool to the end of the extension tube like that, then click the extension tube into the body of the machine and now we've got a bit of extra reach so we can actually reach up high 
to get rid of those pesky cobwebs. But as far as stair cleaning goes, the only nozzle that you have for stairs basically is the large nozzle. But unfortunately, you can't use the machine like this. So this is a little adapter you get and that clips in here. So you need that when you're using the extension tubes, but you don't need it when you're putting the crevice tool on because there's this little indentation there. So the crevice tool does fit directly into the machine without the need for this little adapter. But I was hoping that I could use this, but although it stays on, it would easily, fairly easily fall off. I wonder if the suction will help keep it in place. No, see as soon as I put it onto the carpet, it just pulls away. So that's a bit unfortunate. So there's no dedicated nozzle. So really the only nozzle that I suggest you can use for your stairs is this one. But that's, you know, it's okay for the, around the edges of your stair, but for doing your treads, I mean, you're going to be going like this all the time. Now, there's one saving grace with this little vacuum cleaner. It seems to have regular 32 millimeter accessories. Now, basically, many vacuum cleaners use a 32 millimeter diameter connection. Now, if you have a Miele or a Sibo, they use a different size, so they're not compatible. But if you have the likes of a pneumatic Henry or a Vax cleaner, you might find that the tools from your main vacuum, if you're using this as a supplementary cleaner, you might find that your other vacuum tools fit this. So I tested that theory. Now I've got this turbo nozzle from a Vax upright cleaner, and I think that the Vax uses a regular 32 millimeter connection. So lo and behold, if I remove that I can now fit something that this machine is lacking. Now, I say I can fit it, but it's too loose. So I do need this adapter. So it won't actually go directly into there. It's too loose. But once I connect this adapter, which comes obviously comes with the Goblin, now I can push on a regular 32mm accessory. So now I've converted this little handheld to a handheld with a pet hair turbo brush. So in one fell swoop I have dramatically increased the versatility of this little machine. So, I don't know if Henry, you know, don't quote me, but I do think that Henry tools will fit this. So if you have a Henry, any of the Henry nozzles should fit onto here. For example, the dusting brush or the little furniture brush you get, which is a far better tool to use for doing your stairs. I will do a later video when I've got some of my other vacuums out that do have a 32mm fitting and just see if they do fit. Unfortunately the models I have out at the moment are either Miele or Sibo or I've got some Hoover models out but they use a funny shaped fitting so they won't fit this. But this Vax one does. I've got a Maytag satellite cleaner here which uses tools very similar to a Henry so I'll have to dig that out and see if the satellite tools fit and if they do I'll do a quick video just showing you the other tools you can get because I'm thinking if you can fit say some metal tubes to this I think the Henry tubes might make it a bit heavy I don't know but say the tubes from a pneumatic James which are the lighter aluminium type and using a better floor nozzle that would increase the performance I think of this little vac. It's quite good I'm quite impressed with it so far but it's just a shame that the tools, I mean here are the complete set of tools you get. It's just a shame really, put them there so you can see them, that it doesn't come with a turbo brush. But like I say, by adding that, I can now do my stairs, I can do my upholstery, and I can get a much better result using that than I can just using the supplied tools. I'm at the bottom of my stairs now just to see if this little goblin stick vac 
will clean stairs successfully, will it reach up without me having to unplug and find a nearer socket? Well the main cable supplied with this little machine is just over 6 metres, so that's more than enough to get up the average flight of stairs. Providing of course you have a socket nearby in your hall, most people do have a socket near the stairs, as I do. So I'm just going to carry the little goblin up to the top of the stairs and just see how much mains cable we have. Well, I'm right on the top step and there is still plenty of cable. I could even clean my landing, I think, using the machine plugged in at the bottom. So as far as reach goes, there's no problem. Well, it's time for my summing up. Would I recommend this little goblin stick vacuum cleaner? Well, yes, I would. I'd rather surprise myself. I mean, I used this when I first got it, put it away, didn't think much about it, and thought I must get that demo done for my YouTube viewers. And I'm sitting here after the demo, and to be quite honest, this little vacuum has impressed me quite a lot. For the price I paid, around £25, of course, that's the time of making this video, it might have gone back up to its full price, but even at £35, it's a pretty good little vacuum cleaner, especially if you have any spare 32mm vacuum tools lying about the house, because if you can add them to this machine, you can increase its versatility, because the supply tools aren't up to much. They're okay, they do the job, but you could really improve this machine. As you saw, I can add a turbo nozzle to it, and hopefully I'll be able to add a telescopic tube to it and a full-size turbo nozzle for carpets. So once I do that I'll upload another video and just show you how you can use this with other tools that you might have lying about the house from your old or current vacuum. It's light, it's got a, a good length of cable just over six and a half meters or nearly six and a half meters. The cyclonic system is very inefficient but if you're not giving it a huge pile of dirt to clean like I gave it, it should maintain its suction enough anyway to do the little jobs you need it for. I can imagine taking this out to the car would be far easier than taking out a full size upright or cylinder. Cleaning your stairs again easier than using a big machine and just whipping out and doing your quick clean up jobs in between your main clean. It's ideal. I can't comment on how long it's going to last. It will come with the standard one year guarantee but if you maintain it, look after it I can't see why it won't last you a few years and obviously because it's a machine you'd use for in-between cleaning it's not going to get the heavy use of your main vacuum cleaner. But all in all I'm pretty impressed. So if you want one of these you can pop down to your local Asda store or check online. It's not available online at the moment but it might, might come back online, you never know. But I think it's well worth taking a look at. If you can't run to one of the more expensive rechargeable vacuums and you want something that's going to give you mains power and I have to say, although I can't do a direct comparison because I don't have one I'm pretty sure that the suction of this will be greater than say the Dyson DC59 because it's obviously it's a mains powered vacuum, it's got a 600 watt motor in and so far no battery handheld vacuum has been able to match the suction of a mains powered vacuum so even with a clogged filter it's probably still going to have more suction but obviously it doesn't have the rotating brush as standard that you'd get, say, with the Dyson DC59 Digital Slim. But for a fraction of the price of that, if you want a little vac for your car, your caravan, doing the old quick cleanups, it's well worth looking at. So, I hope you found the review interesting and enjoyable and useful. If you'd like to subscribe, please do, and you'll be updated every time I upload a new video. I'm also on Twitter, the link is below where I tweet about various things. There's a lot of vacuum tweets, but I tweet about other things as well. It's not all about the vacuums, my life. But um, you will get some exclusive pictures and behind the scenes info on this channel, on my Twitter account. You won't find that anywhere else. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, please do. And you might get to know a few things that my regular subscribers don't get to know about. So until the next review, it's goodbye and I'll see you very soon.